Hey everyone, this is Peter from the Firebase team. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Firebase Auth in your app on iOS and Apple's other platforms. At the end of this video, you will know why authentication is important for our apps, how to set up Firebase authentication, how users work in Firebase authentication, how to sign users in and out of your application, how to update your app's UI state in response to users signing in and out, how to restore authentication state when relaunching your application, how to let users sign up for your app, how to retrieve information about your users, and last but not least, how to delete user accounts. <sighs> this is a lot to get through, so let's get started. To make it easier to understand how all of this works, I've created a sample app, which you will be able to download from GitHub to help you get started. So. The app itself isn't too exciting. It's just a simple app that lets users choose their favorite number. And at the moment, I store this information locally in the user defaults. But later, I like to store this data in the cloud so users can retrieve this information on all of their devices or even share it with their friends. My goal is to use Cloud Firestore to manage the user's data. But before I can do that, users need to sign in so I know who they are and so I can restore the correct information for each individual user. Before we can use Firebase authentication, we need to add the Firebase SDK to our app. I've already done this for my sample app, but if you'd like to know how I did that, check out this other video in which I walk you through the steps of setting up a Firebase project using Swift Package Manager. The next step is to add the Firebase auth library to all the targets in which I want to use Firebase authentication. To use Firebase authentication, we need to activate it in the Firebase console. So this is what I'm going to do first. Once I've done this, I need to decide how users can sign into my app. Firebase supports a number of ways to authenticate. For example, sign in with Apple, Google sign in, email and password, email and link, phone number authentication, and my personal favorite, anonymous authentication, and many more. For each of those, the Firebase team has created an authentication provider that handles the authentication flow. The cool thing about those authentication providers is that you can use as many as you'd like in your app, and that means that your users can choose how they want to log into your app. Some people might want to sign in using email and passwords because that's what they're used to. Others might prefer using sign in with Apple or Google sign in, so they won't have to come up with a strong password. If you use a federated identity provider like Google Sign In or Facebook Login in an app that runs on any of Apple's platforms, your app must also offer Sign In with Apple. Check out our video about getting started with Sign In with Apple with Firebase to learn more about this. You can even implement your own authentication provider, for example, if you want to integrate with your corporate authentication system. I will cover the most important authentication providers in separate videos, and we will also look at some of the advanced use cases, such as account linking, in separate videos. But in this video, I want to focus on the basics, and this is where we're going to use email and password authentication. Now, I want to make it very clear that email and password authentication is not my preferred authentication mechanism, since we all know that we humans are very bad at picking strong enough passwords. However, I think we all have a good understanding of how email and password authentication works from a user's perspective. So it is a good example to explain how Firebase authentication works. With that out of the way, let me add email and password authentication to my Firebase project. To make development easier, I recommend using the Firebase emulator. You can think of the Firebase emulator suite as your own personal instance of Firebase running on your local development machine. Since everything runs locally, you don't run the risk of messing up your production data, and you also avoid stepping on each other's toes when you're sharing a development project with your teammates. Another benefit is that the emulator suite also works when you're offline or on a slow network. I'll start the emulator using the following command line. This tells the emulator to persist any user accounts we create and later restore them the next time I run the same command. 
In fact, I've previously created a user account, and as you can see, the emulator has restored this user from disk. This saves quite a bit of time, especially if you have more than just a few test accounts. To connect your app to the emulator suite, add the following code to your Firebase setup code. With this done, let me show you how to sign in an existing user. To make this a little bit easier, I've already implemented the UI for a sign-in dialog with SwiftUI. I use the add environment object property wrapper to obtain the authentication view model from the environment so I can share it with other screens in the app. When I navigate to the authentication view model, you will see that I created an extension for all the operations that I want to cover today, signing in with email and password, signing up and creating a new user account using email and password, signing out again, and deleting the user's account. One very important thing to keep in mind when working with Firebase is that most of its methods are asynchronous. As Swift developers, we have a couple of options to call asynchronous APIs. The most commonly used ones are callbacks, also known as completion handlers. You will find them being used a lot in the Firebase documentation. Another option is combine. If you want to learn more about how to use completion handlers or combine, check out this Twitter thread in which I explain how to use them. However, with the release of Swift 5.5, Apple introduced support for async await to the Swift language, which makes calling asynchronous APIs a lot easier. The good news is that you can call all asynchronous Firebase APIs using async await, so I am going to use this whenever we need to make asynchronous calls in this video. By the way, if you're interested in how this works, check out this video in which I explain how Apple made sure that asynchronous Objective-C code can be called using async await. Before I can make any calls to Firebase authentication, I need to import it. Then I will add a new property for the user. And finally, I can call sign in with email and password to sign the user in with the credentials they entered in the login screen. Since this call can throw an error, I need to wrap it in a do try catch block. If the call was successful, I fetch the user from the auth result and assign it to the user property. If there was an error, I update the error message. Let's quickly run the application to see this in action. I will sign in using the user account you can see in the Firebase emulator on the left. And once I'm signed in, I can see the main screen of the app. And in the Xcode log, you can see the user's ID. OK, this works great. But what if I want to sign up with a new account? At the moment, the only way to create a new account for this application is to go to the emulator or the Firebase console and manually create a new account. And that's clearly not a great user experience. So let's add a sign up feature to the app. I've already prepared the UI for this, so hopefully it should be pretty straightforward to add this feature to the app. So what I'm going to do is I will copy and paste this entire chunk of code and move it down into the sign up with email password method of my view model. And then instead of calling sign in with email and password, I will call create user. Let me run the app flip over to the sign up page and then create a new user account. Once I tap the sign up button, a new user account will be created. And when I click on the refresh button in the emulator, it will appear in the list of users of my app. Really nice. OK, before we can talk about signing out and deleting the user account, we need to take care of a pretty important aspect of our implementation. To see what I mean, let me quickly show you what happens when I relaunch the application. So as you can see, even though I was logged in before, I am no longer logged in after restarting the app. That's a problem, because we don't want people to have to sign in every time they launch the app. The good news, though, is that Firebase maintains the login state for us. But we need to make sure that this information is correctly reflected in the application state. So in my sample app, I use this authentication state property to show the different parts of the UI depending on whether the user is signed in or not. I update this property whenever the user signs in. 
but I don't do that when the application launches. Firebase Authentication has a really nice feature that allows us to listen to the authentication state of the application. It's called Authentication State Listener. So let me go ahead and implement this listener. And I also need to make sure it is registered when the view model is instantiated. This will happen whenever the app launches, so I can be sure that my listener will be called as soon as the UI becomes visible. The listener has a completion handler that will receive the current Firebase auth instance and the user instance. If the user is signed in, the user instance will contain information about the user. And if the user is signed out, this parameter will be nil. So I can just assign this to the user property on the view model, and everything should work smoothly now. Finally, I can clean up my code a bit and move the code for updating the authentication state and the display name into the state listener. And now, when I launch the app again, Firebase Auth will call the state listener when the application starts up. The state listener updates the view model, and the UI will immediately go into its signed in state. Next, let's add an option to sign out. Again, this is already wired up in the UI. All I need to do is implement the signout method in the view model. Signing out is probably one of the most simple API calls in Firebase. Despite being such a simple call, though, there are still things that might go wrong, so I need to wrap this in a do try catch block. By the way, did you notice that this is one of the very few Firebase APIs that are not asynchronous? That's because it just resets the local authentication state. No need to call to the backend. And as a final step, let's consider the sad event of the user wanting to leave your app completely and delete their user account. You probably guessed it. I've wired this up in the UI already. So all we need to do is implement the delete account method in the view model. Now that you know the basic principles of Firebase Auth, there is a lot more you can do. For example, you can use the user's user ID to keep track of any documents that belong to them in Cloud Firestore. Or you can write security rules that make sure users can only access the data that belongs to them in Cloud Storage, Cloud Firestore, and the real-time database. You can even determine the currently signed in user and Cloud Functions and use this information to write serverless backend code that can securely process the user's data. And of course, there are many other ways to authenticate your users. We've got a bunch of videos coming up that cover the most important Firebase authentication providers. So why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you don't miss out on any new episodes? And as I promised, the source code for this video is available on GitHub, so feel free to check it out and use it in your own apps. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one. <music>